pronosphoto.com. Guess what we're going to talk about today? Graduated filters. Now, these are something that you can definitely get in trouble with and kind of screw up a photo. But when used correctly, you can really enhance it and make a big difference in the photo. All right, this particular image that I shot while I was out in Las Vegas this year, uh, this is Lake Mead right here. Uh, I added a graduated filter to, and that's seen right here with these little spots. All right, let's turn that off for you so that you can see the difference. Now, what I did was I darkened the sky. All right, so just to show you that example, turn it on, turn it off. You know what, let's reset it. And let's start over from scratch. Now, we have a good image here. It's already adjusted down here in the foreground. All the colors look good. Everything is saturated down here. But the sky and all just doesn't look quite right. You can see the haze out here from the heat. And the sky just needs to be pumped up generally. So, come. that's where the graduated filter comes in. Use the shortcut key M. To bring up the graduated filter again that's M now we have all kinds of things that we can do to, to uh, adjust and uh, enhance photos exposure brightness contrast saturation clarity sharpness and then color we'll get the color in a little bit all these other ones should be pretty much self-explanatory any of these that you choose are going to be applied all right you can have a new mask or you can add multiple masks and I'll show you that in a minute too. You reset, close the panel, and then turn them on and off so that you can see before and after. All right, so we're gonna do a new one. Now, there's a couple things that you can do here. Um, where you click to start is where the gradient part of it is going to start, okay? In other words, the gradated part is inside of these lines that you're seeing here. And what's above it it's, is means of what it's going to be applied to. All right? As a solid color instead of as a gradate, gradated color. Now, we can hold the shift key to keep a nice straight line. See how I had, a, had trouble keeping that straight with the mouse? Well, if you want it perfectly straight, you hold your shift key down and it will keep it on... It, phone's going off. It'll keep it on a good axis, wherever you want it to be. Alright, so I'm going to put it down in here somewhere, just for the sake of argument. Alright? Now, obviously it looks like it's dark up here, and it's light down here. So, it means we went too far. Alright, so we'll, we'll bring it back a little bit to probably somewhere in there. Alright? Looking much better. Let's t close our mask. Looking better. A little more saturated. And gives us what we want. That nice blue sky. Alright. Next photo. This one. Now you can do the opposite with this tool. Say we wanted to darken the foreground here. Instead of darken. Or we could do it the other way. We could be lightening, light, lightening, <laughs> I'm in trouble with that word. We could be lighten, lightening a foreground or background, whatever, or, you know, foreground, sky, anything, parts of an image. Most of the time I find myself using it to darken, but sometimes you can lighten too. Or you might need to lighten. All right, so we'll open up that panel. And this time we're going to want to darken something. So this time... We're going to start, I'd say, in here. And again, I'm, I'm going to click and drag up this time. Oops, I see I set my exposure the wrong way. That's okay. Now, the farther you drag, the larger the gradation is going to be. Hit my shift key to get me about where I want it. Bring my exposure back. And if I wanted which I don't in this image, but if I wanted, I could really heavily saturate my foreground without having to adjust that or adjust the sky, anything like that. Now, 
you can click and drag these points to readjust the position of that gradient. So if I was down a little bit too far, okay, I can reposition that gradient. All right. Sorry, graduated filter is the right way to say it. By the way, down here in the corner, there's this show edit pins. I like to have that on always so that I know at a glance, as soon as I hit the M key, whether or not I've added any uh, graduated filters. All right. So next image. This one, I could use it to correct or I could also use it to enhance the sky in this photo. All right, so let's adjust the color in the sky. All right, so we don't want to do anything with exposure, so we're going to double click it. So this time we can choose a color. All right, and so we can choose what color we want the sky to be. I kind of like that purple. That's kind of cool. Kind of matches other stuff. All right. Now, getting a red sky like that, is a little overboard so this is definitely one of those things you need to be very light on just add a little bit all right when you're choosing your colors unless it's for real major dramatic effect this is not something that you want to have you know a big yellow sky or anything like that because it just looks fake you know create a real image as you're doing this but that'd be a good example of adjusting that the color of that sky, if that's wanted to, something you wanted to do. All right, next image. This one has absolutely no graduated filter applied to it at all, but I'm going to adjust that sky again. All right, last one we kind of use it to shift it back to blue, uh, whereas this one we're just going to enhance. And again, I wanted to use just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. So I added my gradation. Again, it's a small gradation this time. All right, we don't want a whole lot. Reset our exposure. Now let's really do our color. Okay, we just want to enhance this. This is an evening photo. Okay, maybe in the yellows. Let's see, find a good spot here. There we go. Now... This is an evening, but this is really punching the blues, okay? So this is just another way, another tool, another version of, a way, of, of editing and a different way of editing to give you a really nice color in a certain area. Um, the split toning and HSL panels, all those, are great for applying a change to the entire image or in just a single color range. But with this tool, along with the adjustment brush, you can select just a small area to adjust color or exposure, brightness, saturation, you know, saturation, all that stuff, sharpness. And so here, let's see, where do I want to go? Let's try a little more red. Now see, that actually is a good thing. I kind of don't mind that. Maybe we'll back it off just a little bit. There. All right. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now we could also bring our sharp, our, uh, I'm sorry, not sharpness. That's not what I wanted. Saturation down just a hair. If we thought we went too far with that adjustment, let's turn it off. Pretty good. I like it. Turn it back on. It's something different. It gives it, it makes it a little more moody. Uh, it just has that feeling of of mood, of something that, um, I don't know, just adds to it. And it's not detracting, it's not fixing, there was nothing wrong with the photo in the first place. Just adds to it and gives it a different feel. Last photo. Now, this photo, you're saying, Greg, what, there, I don't need a graduated filter for this photo. Well, wait till you see. I actually have two of them on here. Alright, so I'm going to turn them off. And you might actually not be able to see them, uh, but uh, you know what? Let's zoom in. Let's turn this off. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, there you go. See that spot right there? Okay. Let's turn this back on. See how it's gone? It's something that's very, very minute, 
But you know what? It was so much easier for me to edit that out. Whoops. It was so much easier for me to be able to edit that out with a graduated filter rather than having to go with the, the spot tool or the brush or take it into Photoshop and fix it. So much easier. Let's show you down here on this side. See if we can figure out what we did. Been a while since I shot this photo. There you go. There's a spot there. I'm not seeing anything here real quick quickly at a quick look but this top corner really is the one you could see that I added to it now if you really wanted you could use this as uh, a tool to add more shadows to an image uh, by going to the extremes that's not the thing that I would normally use it for but you know what it might enhance a photo definitely wouldn't replace proper lighting um, you know, knowing how to light things, knowing how to set up your flash, knowing how to do any of those things. But you never know. It might end up uh, just one more tool in your pocket, one more tool in your tool belt. And so you might be able to use it. So let's talk about this image real quick while I have it up. Uh, obviously, I'm a Nikon shooter. Camera in the back is a uh, Nikon F5. This is a Nikon N90S. This is an FE2, and this is a D3 with a 50mm 1.4. Now, the way I shot this was with another D3, and I had one flash over here to the left, way off screen over here this way, all right, uh, with a snoot on it, and shot just a small pattern of light into the cameras, and that's it. I probably had it relatively close and dialed down so that that pattern was, was pretty tight. And that's also how I got these highlights, the stronger highlights. Um, you know, we'll have a, a little bit stronger specular highlight with a, with a closer flash. Uh, probably shot it, well, you know what, let's find out how we shot it. What my exposure was. 60th of 2.8. Sorry, that's my lens that I shot it with. Ah. 1 1 60th of a second at f36. f36. So um, that's how I got that depth of field. And in fact, that the Nikon f5 in the back is a little out. And you know what? So is this guy. He's still a little out. Uh, so I didn't have any everything in focus. But you get the idea. It's, it's just sharp enough. All right. Well, questions, comments, anything like that, love to hear from you. Uh, check us out on the uh youtube yeah youtube that's the one check us out on youtube uh youtube.com slash jared poland uh you can also find us on facebook at fro knows photo uh just search for us there on facebook and you will find us greg Cazillo, fro knows photo.com see ya